Hello, I am Shrella. Let's talk about replacement thoughts. Well, if we ever have thoughts that are triggering to us, they're going to fall into one of eight categories. First of all, and these are negative thinking patterns, we're going to have first grief. Grief can be from um, just, you know, of course we think of grief being death. That's like the worst thing, but it can also be from uh, a separation from somebody or from something happening that we didn't expect to happen. So grief is a first negative pattern. I'm going to tell you eight and then I'm going to tell you what to do about them. The second is transition. So like divorce or empty nesters or retirement, that kind of thing where a uh, change is happening. The third is conflict. Thoughts of conflict, negative thoughts of conflict, either from someone else or oftentimes it's from ourself. It's self-conflict that's happening. Another one is lacking interpersonal communication skills. Knowing how to interact with others can leave us with negative thoughts. I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm like, oh man, I wish I said this differently at church. And why did I say that? And I just get feeling frustrated with myself. Also, abuse and, abuse and violence can bring negative thinking. Injury or illness can bring negative thinking because, of course, you can't do what you normally can do, so then you fall into kind of a, a feeling of despair. And then loss, and that can include like aging. It could include loss of, of um, like uh, your middle section, uh, you know, like your body isn't doing like maybe hair. It's not doing what you want it to loss of some sort that we didn't expect to have happen. And then lastly, we have negative thoughts from disappointment. And of course, that covers a whole lot. And that's kind of included in the things we've just talked about. But the most important thing is what to do about those things. So David Burns has a book where he talks about the cognitive distortions that we have. And he has a couple of books. Um, there's Feeling Great and uh, another one that's uh, feeling good, feeling good, and then his second book is feeling great. And he talks about what to do about these kind of things when we have these negative thoughts. And it's it's human to have these thoughts. So to say, oh, I shouldn't have these. What's wrong with me? It's like, no, that's just the that part of the human experience. So I'm going to go over four of his 10 negative distortions and what to do about it. So first of all, we might suffer from all or nothing thinking. And I think that this one really has to do with your personality. Some people don't go to the black or the white or the all or nothing, but some personalities are prone, I think, to doing this. Either I'm wonderful or I'm terrible. Either this great thing is going to happen or this uh, the worst thing that could happen is going to happen. And it's really hard to see that middle area of this and this instead of this or this. So all or nothing thinking can be damaging to our thoughts because we might just stay in that negative of like, I'll never be good enough. Everything always happens terribly to me. So the answer to this one is a continuum. So we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you might say, well, so where might this negative thinking fall on the continuum? Let's say, let's use an example of um, someone trying to look for a job. And I'm thinking of this because I have two adult children right now that are looking for jobs. Actually, one just got one, so yay. And then the other one is um, looking presently for a job. And so let's think about that. So a continuum might be, he actually said, I have looked for 100 jobs and no one's hiring. So the question is, did he really look for 100 jobs? He might really have actually looked for 20. And there might actually be 80 that are hiring, but he hasn't found them yet. So a continuum of what is true. Did he really look for that many people? Um, also in my example of I'll never be good enough. Is, is that really true? Are you 100%, 10 out of 10, never going to be good enough? Or might you be like 7 out of 10 good enough? You probably are a lot better than you think. So finding that continuum of what is true and to what degree. And like I said, that's kind of like the and instead of just or. The one end or the other. It's like you could be in the middle somewhere. Okay, the second negative distortion is blame. Either of other people or of yourself. Blaming yourself. And so you might say, oh, I'm so terrible. I did everything wrong. I, I am just such a failure. Or you might say, so-and-so did this to me, and they are to blame, and they are terrible. But the reality is, it's and the answer 
is that it's actually part of a pie and we're going to call it the blame pie. And you decide, well, who really had parts in this blame? There's me, maybe for like a third of the pie, and maybe another third would be him, who was also part of the, the equation, and then her or they. So we kind of all have pieces of the pie so that it's not just I am so bad and I did all this thing so bad and it's not just them, they have the whole pie. Well, we all had a little piece and maybe it's just human error was part of what happened or just you know mistakes just whatever so instead of saying i did it all or they did it all we're going to break that into the blame pie the third th thought negative distortion cognitive distortion is shoulding which is like oh i should have done this or he should have done that they should have done this which never really helps because you can't really go back and redo the past right so if you can take away the shoulding on yourself and instead use your, um, the truth. The truth might be, this is what I wish had happened, fill in the blank, but this is really what did happen. So that's being factual. And then the third part of that equation is, and in the future, this is what I would like to do differently. So this way you are taking accountability for whatever happened, um, seeing that it maybe wasn't really as bad as you think it is. And then lastly, what are you going to do differently about that? So kind of reframing all of that instead of, oh, I should have done this. And you just go on all night long and you can't sleep and shoulda, 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 right? But instead you say, well, this is what happened. Um, this is what I would have liked to have happened. And here's what I'm going to do about it next time. Then the last thing is... Um, the uh, fourth of the distortions that we're going to talk about is me the mental filter. And this is where you take something and let's say you have a pebble. And this pebble seems so big because you're holding it up to your eye and it's just taking up all of your vision. But if you put, pull it away like this and maybe even compare it to a hundred pebbles behind it, it kind of gets lost because it's really not that big of a deal. So the mental filter is not seeing something as big as we think it's showing up. And so um, what we can do about that mental filter is to see the opposite. So we might have this little pebble and we're like, this is so huge. And it's like, well, what's the opposite of that thing? Um, like, let's say for getting a job, it might be, oh, I lost my job and um, I had really good benefits and really good pay and I had a lot of friends there and this pebble is huge. This mental filter is like just right here, huge. And then it's like, oh, but wait. So now let's pull that away and let's say there's another 100 jobs that are going to be perfect for you and, and they're, they're going to be just fine for you. So you're going to see the opposite instead of like, oh, everything's terrible and this is all I can see. It's like, oh, and there's all these other fabulous places to work that it's going to be so hard to even choose because there's so many wonderful things out there. So seeing it from a different or another way to do that is to instead of labeling that thing that happened as so terrible, you can say, well, this is how that thing was good. So not even just the, the pulling it away or seeing the opposites, but that this thing is actually good. How could this actually be the best thing that would ever happen to me? And then your brain starts going, oh, well, you know, they actually, that job that I lost actually did have some problems with it. And I had a huge commute and um, I was bored at my job. So now it's like, now we're going to see the good of maybe the, ne the next job I can find. So the next time your brain starts getting the best of you with these negative thinking patterns, remember the four things that you can do here with, first of all, is that all or nothing thinking. Second of all is that blame pie. Third is the not shooting on yourself. And then the fourth is changing that mental filter so that your thoughts are working for you. I believe that God wants us to learn from these things, to not just let it sit in your brain and stew, become soup, become something that's not helpful. We want to be able to change those things so that our thoughts are working for us. Sometimes easier said than done, but here are some tips and tricks for you so that you can find a happy way of thinking. Well, if you like this kind of stuff, I'm talking about self-care and um, improving yourself, uh, you might like my 91-day app-based program that helps you with uh, 
figuring out a healthier way all around to live from the self-care, taking care of your mental health, your physical health from eating and moving better, so that you can be all that God and you intended to be. And you can find it at www.honeydewhealthin91.com.